Hey guys, CJ here, bringing you another character bio, this time part two in our Villains Month theme. And as you can see, it's Morbius the Living Vampire. Now, before you jump into the comment section to get the hate train started, because Morbius isn't really a villain, he's more morally neutral. I know, as I just said, he's more morally neutral. However, he was a villain, albeit a sympathetic one, for the bulk of his character's history. Uh, and, you know, we're kind of, I'm kind of, you know, using a little loophole here. It's Halloween. It wouldn't be Halloween if I didn't do a vampire bio. Uh, he fits that spooky feel we're going for to a T. And before we begin, I really want to tell you, as I mentioned earlier, Morbius is he's really a tragic figure, probably one of the most tragic figures in comics. He's a monster, but it's not by his own choosing, his own greed, his own, you know, most of these villains, you know, they become villains, you know, essentially through their own actions. It's kind of like karma. But he was just a victim, Morbius that is, he was just a victim to cruel and peculiar circumstances that honestly started before his birth. And his story is extremely interesting, and in fact, you may come out liking the guy. I'm right there with you. I I wasn't really, really, I, I knew uh, of Morbius. I knew he was a Spider-Man villain. I kind of knew his history a little bit, but I really, you know, didn't read into the character much until I did the research. And now, you know, color me a fan. I like Morbius a lot. You wouldn't, so you wouldn't be alone. He's had his own ongoing series for years. And as I mentioned, many consider him more of a tragic hero than a villain. And his public his, uh, his publication history is also really interesting. He became a character only after the Comics Code lifted their restrictions on most supernatural characters in the 60s. Now, a brief history lesson for you in, you know, American media. Up until the 30s, media was largely unregulated. And then in 1934, film especially got the Breen Code and many other forms of entertainment followed suit. Uh, with their own, you know, kind of regulations restricting what could and could not be shown. And the Comics Code uh, restricted a lot of things, including supernatural characters. But in the 60s, they started to allow more characters, and vampires were one of them. So he came out of that. And he was originally a Spider-Man villain, you know, both occupied New York. And he remained a foe of the web crawler for much of his, much of his existence, although certain storylines have kind of questioned that relationship. Uh, they've forced them to put aside their differences and work together. Now for the origin, what we all came here for. Michael Morbius was born in Greece, and he was a very sheltered child due to a rare genetic blood disorder. The disorder was considered deadly and made his body extremely weak. He, along with his childhood friend, Emil, they grew up to be biochemists, seeking cure, uh, a cure for his condition. He actually won a Nobel Prize uh, for his contributions to the field of biochemistry. He couldn't even attend the ceremony because he was too weak to even pick up a coffee cup. Um... But finally, he struggled for years to find a cure, and finally he ended up figuring something out. Uh, it was an experimental test, and it would combine the biochemistry of bats with shock therapy. Weird 60s science, forgive it. Um, the test worked, he was cured instantly, but the procedure altered his appearance. It caused him to m look much like the vampires of legend and fairy tale. Uh, his skin turned white, his eyes turned red, he grew fangs and talons. And in the aftermath, he was actually overcome with bloodlust, and he accidentally killed his own friend, Emil, in his newfound hunger. His fiance or his lover, or whatever, uh, this woman he had a relationship with, was also on the boat. And to avoid killing her, he kind of he woke up, realized what he had done, and then fled. He jumped in, you know, into the water, and he was eventually picked up by a ship that was going to New York. Um, as hunger struck him again on his journey as he killed multiple crew members before escaping and finally making it to the city. And this is where his, his, his tale with Spider-Man eventually kind of starts very quickly, right as he arrives to New York. Um, and that's a, that's a story for another day. It's, I actually included it in the recommended reading if you want to go check it out. And following his origin, he's actually largely a foe to Spider-Man, as I just mentioned. However, it's not quite as black and white as a battle between good and evil. Often their conflict is just a product of Morbius seeking some new method of curing his disease, or more likely the inescapable hunger that so often overcomes him. Uh, he also often works with the li uh, he works with the lizard a lot, uh, although their teaming is it's not sinister. It's not like the Sinister Six. Uh, it's really the opposite. They're working together as scientists to find cures for their respective afflictions. And Kurt Connors is another guy who kind of is a tragic figure in that way. A lot of Spider-Man, a lot of Spider-Man villains are. But on to his abilities. Uh, Morbius has enhanced strength. Uh, he can lift up to 1,500 pounds, actually. Uh, he's got enhanced speed and agility, reflexes, and senses. 
He's actually, I guess, technically beyond peak human. Not much beyond, clearly, but he is beyond peak human. Uh, he has sharp fangs and talons as a result of the changes to his appearance, and he even has a healing factor, although it's not quite Deadpool or Wolverine level. Essentially, he can heal from everything up to and including bullet wounds. He can also hypnotize and control individuals, which is a power that you know the legendary vampires like Dracula and Nosferatu had. Um, I, I, and he, he kind of... There, the mind control thing is more like he when he turned people into vampires, he could you know control their minds, um, and he's actually a gifted biochemist. He didn't give that up when he became a monster. So many people, so many of these villains, you know, give up what they were doing before, but he actually is still you know using that biochemistry to try and find a cure. Uh, he does have weaknesses though, uh, although the traditional weakness of vampires, they aren't necessarily applicable to him. He, he's not going to burn up in sunlight. His eyes and skin are sensitive to it. Uh, if you notice, he's got you know big red eyes and super white skin, so it makes sense. It's just like somebody that's really pale is more likely to get sunburned, just the extreme version of that. Um, it won't burn him alive, though, as I mentioned. Uh, the one thing you could call a weakness for him is his hunger for human blood, um, which causes him to temporarily temporarily lose his sanity as he becomes a mindless and bloodthirsty beast. This hunger is the primary reason Morbius often gets into trouble in the first place. Now, on to his recommended reading. There's, you know, not a ton out there in terms of feature stories for Morbius. I mean, he does now have his ongoing series, as I listed, Morbius the Living Vampire. Uh, and that's been going on since 2013. But other than that, he's been kind of like a, a side character. He's been the main villain in some things. Although, you know, like I said, the term villain is questionable when applied to him. Uh... One such here is Legion of Monsters Morbius. The Legion of Monsters series is really good at shedding light on a lot of these these characters that would be considered, you know, monstrous. Um, and then the Ultimate Spider-Man series, 2000 to 2009, uh, numbers 95 and 96. This was actually, fun fact, right before the Clone Saga. Uh, it was him, and actually I think it was more like Blade was hunting Morbius down, uh, and Spider-Man was kind of, you know, caught in the middle of it. Um, but that's a really good, that's actually the first appearance of Ultimate Morbius. Uh, and then The Amazing Spider-Man number 101, A Monster Called Morbius, is the original 1960s Spider-Man issue where Morbius is first introduced. And it's really kind of interesting because it does set up him as a little bit of a sympathetic character, although it doesn't go to the lengths that modern comics now do to make him much more tragic. It's kind of like, it's like, Spider-Man's kind of like, you know, why don't you go, you know, you try to find a cure. There's a cure out there somewhere. And Morbius is like, I've been trying to find a cure. If I'm going to suffer, you're going to suffer. And it's kind of just that they it, they weren't really thinking in shades other than black and white back in those days for the most part. Anyways, Morbius, really, really interesting character. I, I Like I said, I didn't know much about him until I started researching, and I feel like that's the way for a lot of folks. Morbius isn't quite an A-list villain, uh, but maybe he should be. I feel like, you know, if we could get Morbius in a movie anywhere, I would I would dig that. I think he would be... Sort of like he would fit right into what they're trying to do with a lot of villains in movies nowadays, where they make it, you know, not so black and white. They've got to make him relatable and humanized and stuff like that. So Morbius kind of he he he's got that already down pat. You don't have to change anything in his character for that. It seems like quite a simple fit. Anyways, that about wraps it up here from me. Uh, I will actually tell you right now what the next character bio is going to be, since you've stuck around this long and listened to me talk about the living vampire. Uh, the next character bio is going to be Clarion the Witch Boy. Uh, somebody suggested this in the comments. I, I don't know who it is off the top of my head, but you know, hats off to you. Uh, I originally had Cersei, but she didn't really fit the spooky vibe. She is a villain, but she didn't quite fit the spooky well enough. Clarion the Witch Boy, though, right up the alley. Props to you, sir. You know who you are. Good job. I would give you a cookie if I knew where you were. Uh, anyways, that about wraps it up here for me. Uh, so signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time for the next Villains Month character bio.